Okay, fabulous. I think everything's working. So thank you for signing up for this on-demand webinar, Working From Home, Stay On Track and Stay Motivated, which um, I've decided to actually record the on-demand version uh, because at some point it's very difficult for people to keep on signing up to webinars and things. So I figured if I do this on demand, you can sign up and watch it when it suits you, basically. Um, as you know, working from home, a lot more people are having to do it right now, not under the best circumstances. And one of the issues working from home is that the majority of us at least associate being at home with kind of downtime, relaxation time, time with the family. And all of a sudden, we're having to work from home. And if you don't already work from home, with that come a huge amount of additional challenges, having children around, uh, you know, if the school's closed, uh, potentially living in a small area, if, if you're in an apartment, uh, if you're in a flat somewhere, you don't have easy access to be able to go out into a garden and get some fresh air. All of these things can have a serious impact on your health and your mindset. So what I'd like to do over the next 45 minutes or so is to give you some pointers, give you some indications, um, hopefully give you some inspiration about what you could be doing to make sure that you get through this next period safely. Because the biggest question that nobody can answer is how long is this going to be for? So uh, at Christmas time or when there are other holidays going on or if you go on holiday with the family somewhere, you know, some people go into meltdown at having the thought of having to spend 24-7 um, with the entire family, especially if you are somebody who, you know, you go out of the house in the morning, um, you, you work 8, 10, 12 hours a day, you come home in the evening. It's a routine that you're in. And like I said, if you're going on holiday or somewhere or maybe Christmas or, or another kind of holiday where you have a break, you can prepare yourself mentally to uh, to deal with the additional pressure or stress that you might be feeling. But in this particular scenario that we find ourselves in now, uh, you just don't know how long it's going to be for. And uh, and there are a lot of um, emotions coming up. You only need to go onto social media to see that, you know, some people are very, very unhappy and forget doing the work. They, they're just having a really hard time keeping the family together, keeping everybody sort of on track. So, as I said, over the next 45 minutes or so, I want to give you some indications, potentially some inspiration and some motivation. Uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel. It's not going to be forever. So. But uh, before we begin in earnest, please do ensure, if you haven't already done so, that you've turned off all other programs that constantly refresh, you know, your email, Facebook, LinkedIn, social media, all that stuff, because it can detract from the bandwidth. And one of the issues that we've had recently um, with this platform that I'm using is that the number of people going online is just increasing like nobody's seen before. It also means that um, the, the bandwidth, the, you know, the signal from the mast and, and the internet, the ethernet and all the rest of it, the demand is much, much higher. So do yourself a favor. Hopefully your internet signal is strong enough anyway. But by closing down those other programs, you'll, you'll just get the full benefit of everything I'm saying and everything you see. Now, I said use the chat box to ask, ask questions. Of course, this is an on-demand webinar, so you're not going to have uh, that facility, that ability. But please do, if you have any questions or, or whatever, you know, get in touch, go onto my website, whatever it is, um, please do let me know and I'll do my best to answer. I can't answer all questions individually, but um, if I, you know, Many people do tend to have the same questions and then I can do a video or, or a blog about it to help you that way. Having said that, at the end of today's webinar, I am going to be sharing with you um, a uh, my online community, my feel good online community that you can come and join if you would like to, if you feel it's necessary by the, by the time we get to the end of uh, today. So, as I said, working from home can be a huge shock to your system. A, if you've never done it before, but B, if it's imposed on you, as it is with so many people at the moment. And C, if you've got your family around you, but also if you're living alone, it, it just... 
you know, we're social animals. We we need other humans. We miss that social um, interaction. And if you thought distractions at work were bad, you know, the number of times you complain about somebody telephoning you, interrupting you, putting work on your desk, all those kind of things. At home, it's even worse <laughs> because at work, you're at least in the mindset of, of being in the office. At home, if you've got your so sofa and the television there, it's very easy to be distracted. Also, with other people telephoning you, if they, you know, they're feeling down, they want to feel reassured or whatever, oh, just give so and so a quick call. So the distractions at home can actually be a lot more. And as I've already mentioned, isolation is not good for your health. We are social animals, we human beings. And even though you might be the type of person who does enjoy knuckling down, being quiet and getting the work done, isolation for any amount of time is simply not good for you. We need some form of intimacy. We need that social interaction. Even telephoning, messaging, um, writing emails, that's not enough. You need to see people. I'm going to be giving you my idea about how you can do that as we go through. So specifically, uh, we're going to talk about um, how you can easily bring routine into your day. Secondly, how to limit those feelings of isolation. And thirdly, to the extent possible, to stay focused and uh, shut out those distractions that are keeping you from doing your work. So, <clears throat> excuse me, who am I and why am I doing this? Well, if you signed up, you probably saw my name is Gwyneth. I don't talk about my surname too often. It's too long and too complicated. I spent more than 20 years working in international organisations. So my speciality is working with expats, uh, people on the international, um, in the in international arena, because working relationships and, and other things, um, you know, even if you're in business, you're an expat entrepreneur, as I am, uh, the whole communication, the building working relationships with people can be a little bit challenging when you've got lots of different ideas of what's wrong, what's right, what's professional, what's not, and all the rest of it. So that's my speciality. But on a very basic level, I love working with people. I never, um, you know, I never did anything technical. I'm not, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an accountant. I don't do any of those things. Hats off to those of you uh, that do. I'm a people's person. And in 2011, when I lost my job, I decided to go then and train. And I then qualified as a personal performance coach. In between times, I've written a few books. And by the way, if you are belong to Kindle Unlimited. Remember that you can get all of my books free. If you're looking for something to do over the next few weeks, go and go and check out Kindle Unlimited. Put my name into the search engine. But be careful if you're watching, if you're buying from Amazon Germany, because they translate my surname. I'm not even going to go there. Um, I established my business in 2013. And since then, it has been my mission to help others be the best version of themselves. My company name says it all feel good. It's so that you feel good about being you so that you have a job that you love so that you're doing the work that you enjoy with people you like in an environment where you feel comfortable. Um, and to Build those strong working relationships so that you feel confident about everything that you do. And working from home specifically, you know what? I learned the hard way because when I lost my job and spent a couple of years wandering around, wondering what on earth it was I was going to do, it's very easy to uh, feel like as if you're on holiday every day and uh, life just passes you by very, very quickly. So I'm going to be talking about the things that I learned, the mistakes I made so that you don't. Now, because we are creatures of habit, I keep on calling us creatures. I mean that in the nicest possible way. Because human beings um, survive on habits, routines, you know, we learn through repetition. If a routine is disrupted, i.e. change, uh, we all um, approach that change, we all respond or react to that change very, very differently. Now, in this situation where that change has been imposed on us, sometimes, you know, that there are many people right now who this morning, as you know, everything was normal. And this afternoon, they've just been told that they needn't come to the office for the next three weeks. And um, 
any interruption to that kind of routine can be very disturbing. We like to know what's happening around us. We want to know what the plan is. Uh, very, very few people I know, I don't think I know anybody actually, who can be completely spontaneous all the time and say, yeah, absolutely no problem, bring it on. So by bringing routine into your day, you're going to be doing yourself a huge favour because not only is it about dealing with this change now, in a few weeks time when you do go back to work, you are going to have to readjust back to that environment again. So if you can keep things as routine as possible as you, as, as you can right now, it will also make your transition back into the workspace much, much easier. And one of the first things um, I always suggest is that, you know, when you get up in the morning, get up and get dressed as you would for work. I'm not saying necessarily a full tie and a suit and all the rest of it. But if you've got your fluffy socks on, your pyjamas or, or um, jogging gear, you know, trainers and all the rest of it, unless that's what you usually wear at work anyway, your mind isn't going to isn't going to be there you feel different you know when you put your your work clothes on in the morning you're putting on a kind of a different persona you're getting you're putting on the personality that is going to work and if you stay in your pajamas or your dressing gown or, or just really comfortable clothes all day this is going to affect uh, your attitude to your work now of course your mindset is although you are used to doing things in a certain way, it's important to remember that you are completely in control of your mindset. It's very easy to uh, become distracted uh, or uh, upset by, by news, by other people being upset and calling you and telling you they're upset. Uh, but your mindset is going to be absolutely key to the next few weeks. So, as I said, get up at a similar time that you would on, on a normal work day and get dressed. No pyjamas, no fluffy socks. A lot of people um, are now in a situation where they have children at home. Now, if you've got um, school age children with whom you can have a, a conversation, it's going to be a lot easier, for example, than if you have a kindergarten aged child or children or even a baby, and all of a sudden there's nobody there that can care for them. If you're in that situation, you really need to have a, a conversation with your supervisor, with your boss, with your colleagues, with your family about how you are going to manage the time. It is impossible for you to stay focused if you've got a toddler running around one you know you can't just let them run around <laughs> it is not going to work but you need to also limit the stress that you're feeling by managing that situation not trying to do everything at once it's just impossible you will send yourself around in circles so help your family to manage their routine too if you've got teenagers sit down with them put together a timetable. Um, one, one thing I did with a client was uh, just an A4 sheet of paper and we just put the week down and everybody's name at the top of, of the sheet of paper. And then everybody wrote in what they were gonna be doing when in different colored pencils. So you have a color coordinated chart sat down at the table together and you know so and so is going to do the washing and somebody else is going to do the dishwasher and somebody else is going to take the dog for a walk and these are the two hours i absolutely don't want to be disturbed because i'm working on a report for work so you're not going to be able to do um eight hours focused even if you're living on your own you are not going to manage focused focused eight hours of work in your work environment, in your normal work environment, it's very rare or very unlikely rather that you're working for that amount of time 100% on the job. Because like I said, there will always be interruptions, telephone calls, lunch breaks, coffee breaks, people coming to see you. So don't kid yourself. Manage this this time. Um, you know, whoever is in your household, sit down together and work out a timetable that you all agree on. Maybe you've got a a teenager who can look after a smaller child. But you would also be amazed that young young children, I'm not talking about toddlers, two and three year olds, but um, you will be amazed at how uh, flexible some children can be. And it may just be that you say to them, you know what, go and watch telly for an hour. And by the way, screen time is not a big thing, actually. It's the repetition when they play games. That's when the problems start. Uh, watching their favorite video, 
you know, I'm going, I've got to do this for uh, an hour and then I shall come and play with you for an hour. And, and like I said, even if you can manage your time like that, bringing routine in so that everybody knows what they're doing, as opposed to just trying to spin all the plates and keep it all going at the same time, you will be doing yourself and your family a huge um, favour. When I talk about planning your day the evening before, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. Um, if you can finish your work day at a specific time um, and a few minutes before then, you know, just look over what you've done throughout the day and then also look at the tasks you have to do for the next day. This is also important for your lovely brain to keep your emotional intelligence and everything safe um, because by sort of putting an end to the day, it's as, as if you are walking out of the office, you know, you close your laptop, you close your notebook, you already have your plan for tomorrow, it will help you to shut off more easily and it potentially could help you to sleep better. I know a lot of people, they worry, 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 what's going to be happening tomorrow. If you've already worked on it in your mind to the extent possible and you've made some notes about what needs to happen the next day, you will be able to shut off more easily. Include coffee and lunch breaks. If necessary, put um, alarms on your telephone and stick to those coffee breaks. Um, I'm going to talk about this again. You know, we, we can't actually focus any more really than 45 minutes at a time. So if you can break your day down even to 45 or, or 90 minute chunks so that you've got a small break in between, put alarms on your telephone for your coffee and lunch breaks and stick to them. Again, with lunch, it can be very easy. You know, you stop and there's the family there or maybe on your own. Or maybe you put the television on to watch some news and all of a sudden two hours have gone by. And it's like, oh, crikey. Um, so stick to your timings to the extent that you can. Um, there are a huge amount of apps online. Something I've just discovered recently is called ClickUp. Um, there's something called Trello, Google Docs. There are all sorts of things that you can use to track your time online. I'm a bit of a, a, a stickler, a bit old fashioned, if you like. I still use a, a diary and a pen simply because, well, I'm not going to go into the whole emotional intelligence thing, but actually using a pen and paper also helps you to process your thoughts and helps you plan more effectively. Um, decide what time you're going to finish your day. Are you going to finish at half past four or five o'clock? These next few weeks could be a huge opportunity for you to actually get used to stopping work at a reasonable time, especially if you're the type of person who works until eight or nine o'clock at night or on weekends, you're constantly tired. Use these next few weeks to really set those boundaries, get into this strict routine, learn how to be focused on your work so that when you do transition back into your office space, uh, you don't slip into those horrible habits of staying at work for hours and hours after everybody else has gone home just because you want to make a good impression. Now, something else that is really important is to have a clear um, desk space for this routine. And I appreciate this is going to be difficult for some if you don't have a, uh, if you're not living in a huge apartment or if the children have all got their own bedrooms and you don't have your own um, dedicated home office space. Yes, it's going to be a challenge. But think about how you, you know, get a bit creative. Have you got some plants that you could put around a part of the table or have you got a small table that you can put in a corner somewhere with a chair where you can work. Um, I've got a big, it's just like a metal um, frame actually that I've just got a huge piece of fabric over. I sometimes use it for my video backdrop, um, but that works really, really well as a screen. Maybe you've actually got a screen that you can put up, but to the extent possible, make sure that you have dedicated workspace for the next few weeks because sitting on the sofa is not good for your back and it's not good for your brain. And speaking of sitting, um, the few people um, on the webinars I've been holding you, somebody said, I'm not comfortable sitting where I am. I, you know, we've got all this lovely ergonomic furniture at work and I haven't got it at home. Because none of us know how long any of us are going to be in isolation, in lockdown, asked to stay at home, I would suggest that you consider investing in some kind of a work chair. I've got something very basic here. Um, I don't think it even cost me 50 euros. I know 50 euros for some is going to be a lot. Um, 
but also you know you might not be spending money on on public transport and, and petrol and other things and because we don't know how long it's going to be a chair is going to be a worthwhile investment so take a look on online and see what you can find there if you're already feel uncomfortable otherwise make sure that it is a sturdy chair if it's very hard potentially you can um i'm just looking around i just think you know put a jacket on there or, or a cushion or a blanket so that you are feeling comfortable make sure too that you have sufficient light especially if you've decided to put a table in a corner you don't want to be squinting at your screen all the time you want to uh, be able to see everything properly so um again i've just got a very small uh, lamp that I keep here on my desk so that you can see what's going on uh, in, in your workspace. If you are writing reports, if you're having to do data entry of some description, to the extent possible, do your planning activities offline, i.e. with a pen and paper, so that when it comes to working on the screen, you really are doing what's absolutely necessary and not trying to edit or draft and all those things because you will eventually um, hurt yourself, if, especially if the, if the light isn't enough. Have an extension lead close by for charging. Now, this is something I noticed when I uh, first started working. I was forever getting up, looking for bits, looking for an adapter, looking for a charger, um, looking for my phone cable. So all of those things that you need, bring them to your workspace with you and make sure that you've got an extension lead plugged in so that your laptop, your computer, you can just plug it in, your phone, your printer, whatever it is, so that you're not constantly getting up to look uh, for different things. Uh, keep your space as neutral as possible. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're working at home, it's highly likely that there is going to be, a, you know, maybe children's toys around or there's going to be a pile of washing or the dishwasher is going to be going or maybe someone's cooking in the kitchen. All of these things are going to be distractions to you. So if you can keep your workspace as neutral as possible, if you can keep your, you know, what you are actually looking at as neutral as possible, again, you're going to be helping your brain to focus on the task in hand. When we are when we are looking at things, you know, when we're taking in, in the colours, uh, the words, the, the forms, the, the objects, our brain is is transforming um, all of that information, you know, so, so we can see it is coming in through through our eyes and our brain transforms it uh, transforms it into uh, tangible information for us to be able to understand and a little fact here is that well depending on which scientist you ask but the sub the conscious brain is only capable of processing around 40 bits of um, information per second and the subconscious um, is taking in approximately 4 million bits of information per second so by having a neutral workspace, you're also helping your creativity, your inspiration, your motivation to stay on a, on a keen level, to, to stay, um, you know, I'm going to say no mess. You know, piles of books and other stuff all around you are going to inadvertently irritate, frustrate, make you mad. OK, so try and keep your space as neutral as possible. Like I say, I appreciate that. This is going to be a challenge for some. Um, these are just my suggestions about how you might overcome them with plants or sticking up a blanket and or getting some coat hangers from the ceiling and hanging a blanket from that, whatever it takes to make sure that you're screened off. Uh, snacks. I've now removed all the chocolate <laughs> from my table. Um, if you're feeling stressed, sometimes some people do like to uh, start nibbling. And the problem is if you're at home, it's uh, not just a case of what you've got on your desk, um, potentially it's, you know, it's what you've got in the cupboard as well. There can be a tendency to, to comfort eat. So again, if you are the kind of person who needs a snack or two, I'm not saying don't eat chocolate, um, but make sure you've got everything on your desk and please be disciplined enough to not go off to the kitchen uh, just because you've run out of something. Wait until your coffee break alarm goes off or your lunch break alarm goes off and then um, all the same. Basically, make sure that you have everything you need within easy uh, reach so that you are not leaving your desk and coming back and leaving your desk and coming back because that eventually will also wear you out because you will feel that you're not focused, that you're not getting anything done. Moving on, limiting feelings of isolation. Now, 
you might be thinking to yourself actually it's not <laughs> i want isolation i want to be on my own my family's already driving me crazy i was in the supermarket a couple of days ago and i said thank you to one of the ladies who was filling up the shelves and she said i'm so grateful to be at work she said because if i had to stay at home 24 7 with the whole family she said i would be going mad already it's not even about being on your own. It's the isolation I'm talking about is missing the social contact you have with the people that you usually see on a day to day basis. Now, you may even say to yourself, oh, I don't like my colleagues or actually I'm really happy not to see them. But again, because you have seen them regularly, Monday to Friday, usually um, for, for a few hours throughout the day and then suddenly you don't see them you're missing something. And that can create uh, feelings of isolation that can make you feel very, very lonely, even if you have your family with you. So I suggest a, a few things. Um, first and foremost is to find an online community, uh, join groups on Facebook or LinkedIn. Now, of course, that's a kind of passive thing. And I know some people shy away from social media completely. But there are a lot of people feeling the same way that you are right now. And um, it's my opinion that the more people that can come together and join in these groups, the more support everybody can be um, for those others. And it's just going to make things uh, much, much easier to, to get through. Another thing that can make you feel very lonely and negative is by watching too much news or, or reading uh, the news every hour on your laptop or whatever. I don't actively watch the news anymore. I stopped years ago. I have to go into my parents now and again and say, turn off the news because they sat there all day watching what's going on. It really will bring your energy down. And let's face it, at the end of the day, watching the news is not contributing to your well-being. Yes, you want to be informed. So decide that you're going to watch some kind of summary or listen to a summary once a day on the radio, on the television, maybe in the morning or at lunchtime or in the evening. Not too close to you going to bed because otherwise you'll be thinking about what you just saw on the news. But limit the amount of news that you are digesting, because I promise you, if you're watching it and watching it, you, that it will bring you down. The media, the whole sensationalism about the statistics that are being thrown at us, they're frightening. And if you're watching that on a regular basis, you're going to frighten yourself. So get rid of the television. Don't get rid of the television. But um, please do. Uh, limit the amount of time that you are watching or reading the news. Use your commute time to do something for yourself. So I'm going to assume that you probably commute maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, maybe a little bit longer to work every day. That is now your time. Of course, if you've got a family, you're going to have to rearrange this a bit differently. But I would still suggest that if possible, shut yourself in the bathroom if need be. Use those 20 minutes or 30 minutes for something for you that you've wanted to do for a long time. That might be reading a book. That might be um finding an online yoga course on, on YouTube. That might be uh, downloading an app and learning how to meditate, doing some breathing exercises. But give yourself that private time, that private space. Because again, otherwise, if you, if you are constantly out there, you're going to wear yourself out. You're going to bring your energy down. Um, people wanting things from you, only working, it's just, you know, it's just chaos. You need some time for yourself. So I would suggest using that commute time for something special just for you. Maybe even have a virtual coffee with one of your friends using Zoom or Skype or something. Um, if your boss hasn't already done so or if you are the boss, set up a regular call on Zoom or some other kind of similar um program with your colleagues. As I mentioned at the beginning, texting, emails, telephoning. There is a big part of communication missing there. You need to see people's faces, particularly important if you are on your own, if you're living alone. Encourage your boss or if you're the boss, encourage your colleagues once or twice a week. It doesn't have to be a huge long meeting, but just to check in. Hey, how's it going? Have a human conversation, not just about work. We're all in this together and just, um, you know, smile at each other, tell each other a joke, whatever you've been up to, whatever it is, but have that face-to-face -face conversation. 
Now, if you are a boss <laughs> who's worried about how all the work is going to be done, because I've heard this as well, some people have told me that they have been on a, on a Skype call for more than two hours. It is completely unreasonable to expect anybody to do that. And actually, in my opinion, and I have an opinion, that's really, really bad planning. If you have got a meeting, if there's something that needs to be discussed, please make sure that everybody involved has the information in advance so that they can think about it, so that they can come up with their comments, so that they can come up with their input and their feedback before you have the online meeting and then take the decisions online together just in case there are any disagreements or, or things that need to be clarified. Spending two hours online or longer no go. People are under enough stress, enough pressure as it is without having to sit at a stupid screen, focusing on what people are trying to say. Maybe the connection is not great and they're sitting there thinking, you know what? We could have done all this on email. It's not good for anybody's motivation. Plan some fun stuff. This isn't going to last forever. Maybe you can start thinking about your holidays later in the year. But for the evenings and the weekends, Video is just absolutely amazing. If you don't like it, now is time to be friends with it. Um, I've seen some incredible things. Uh, a local choir, they've, they're, they're doing their choir practice using Zoom. Zoom is fantastic, by the way. They're, they're doing their choir practice online. Everybody's um, plugging into Zoom and uh, singing along. And it's absolutely brilliant. You can do the same with a yoga class. You could um, arrange a party, a virtual party at the weekend with a few of your friends. Um, and everybody takes it in turn to, to play their favorite piece of music on, on a CD or on their phone or whatever. You could have a cake party where everybody's at home. Maybe you've all got the same recipe and everybody's making the same cake and then uh, you're chatting to each other as you're baking. And at the end, you know, everybody takes their cakes out of the oven and give each other points, have a little competition about who made the best cake or, you know, there is so much that you can do. But please bring some fun in, into your life as well. Um because laughter is probably the best, best medicine that any of us could wish for. Uh, if you are watching the television, find some comedy shows or some, some funny films. Just check that they really are funny because sometimes I find things under comedy and they are absolutely not funny. But plan some fun things as well. Put those things into your diary. Be accountable to yourself for looking after yourself and potentially your family and, and doing those uh, fun things together. One thing that uh, I've been recommending to all my clients for absolutely years now is something called emotional freedom technique or EFT or tapping. And it's like acupuncture without the needles. You tap around your face and um, on your collarbone, under your arm and on top of your head. Uh, a lot of the time we're telling ourselves, put yourself together. Don't be so stupid. That is putting additional pressure on yourself. EFT helps you to acknowledge that emotion, but then to let it go. I'm not going to even try and describe the science. I don't understand it completely myself. But if you're willing to try anything, if you really are um, feeling stressed out, and believe me, the first time I saw this, I thought you have got to be kidding me. In between time, I think it's absolutely brilliant. Look up Brad Yates on YouTube. You will find hundreds of videos. Um, he's done some really, really good videos about dealing with feels, feelings of isolation, panic, fear, all the negativity that so many people are feeling at the moment. If you're embarrassed about doing it in front of your family, go into the bathroom. If you're not, do it with the entire family. It's non-invasive. It doesn't hurt. It's not a medical treatment of any description. It could potentially help you to feel a lot, lot better about what's going on and your situation right now. Goodness gracious me. So number three, stay focused. <sighs> okay. One year old crawling across the floor, somebody else wanting food, somebody else calling you because they feel unhappy and they just want to chat. It's a challenge. It really is a challenge. And like I said, there is no way that you are going to be able to focus eight hours a day on just doing the work that you're supposed to be doing. So for when you are working, and if you can, if you've got a home office, just shut the door. Just shut the door. I spoke at the beginning about managing um, expectations, sitting down, working out a routine for the rest of the family. 
Tell them, put up a do not disturb sign from eight o'clock until nine o'clock. I'm working or from 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock. Do not disturb me. I will be very happy to come and iron or, or cook or I'm talking from, a, you know, my perspective, the things I do. I haven't got children. It's my parents, by the way, <laughs> and the dogs. But um, but just tell people, you know, I tell my parents now I shut my door. I say, please don't disturb. Please don't let the dogs out. Uh, you know, for the next 90 minutes or so, I'm focused on this. Yes, it's weird, but it works. Share your timetable with your family. Every day, sit down, maybe over breakfast if, it, if it's appropriate, and just uh, check in with everybody, right? Everybody know what they're doing today and, and just get on with it. I want to be clear, you cannot, you cannot deal with the unknowns. So if you've got youngsters who are, you know, I'm going to say, I don't want to say devastated, but that's the sense that I get. Um, some youngsters who have just finished, um, been sent home from school, um, they may, they, they still may have exams. They don't know if exams are going to be hold, held. Maybe they've had exams. They've no idea what's going to happen with their results. They're looking at going to university. There are a huge amount of unknowns at the moment. It, that's absolutely clear. But, and I know this sounds ideological, Please don't spend your energy and please don't let those around you spend their energy worrying about issues over which they have no control. It is going to be your government. It is going to be your authorities that make those decisions. It really is up to you to manage your well-being, your mental health, your mindset, and potentially that of your family to help them manage their well-being and their mindset as well. There are some things that you have no control over and spending time worrying about those things that you, you can't control. You're doing yourself down. Another thing that somebody, you know, was concerned about their family on the other side of the country. They can't visit them. Elderly parents. You worrying is no help to them whatsoever. The best thing you can do is to make sure that you stay on track, you stay motivated, you stay healthy, so that when everything does start get, getting back to normal, you're in a stronger position to be able to support them. If you're really concerned, and I've seen this happening on Facebook as well, is people putting out messages to their friends saying, have I got any friends in such and such a region? Would you mind just going and knocking on the door and just kind of, are you okay? Because, you know, I'm speaking to them on the phone, but I just want to know that they're they're really okay. Social media for, for these things is, is absolutely amazing. But please don't bring yourself down worrying about things over which you have absolutely no control whatsoever. As I said already, set an alarm for your coffee, lunch breaks and ending your workday and stick to it. Keep your workspace tidy so that your brain isn't thinking, oh, I've got a mess on my desk. I've got a mess on my desk. I've got a mess on my desk. And you're trying to work at the same time. Not great. And set up your own um, tracking um, mechanisms such as Trello, Clip up, ClickUp, Google Docs. Um, even though you know what you're doing, because you are having to deal with so much change at the moment, any assistance you can give to your thought processes, to your creativity, to your ability to analyze um, and cope with anything, any program, any way that is going to help you do all that, is an is an absolute uh, positive is an absolute must so find something that you feel comfortable working with now it is um, a known fact that the majority of us cannot focus completely on any situation for longer than 45 minutes so give your brain a break every 45 minutes get up just stretch look out the window don't go and start um, watching television if needed you know make yourself a cup of tea or coffee Make sure, too, that you have a jug or a bottle of water close to hand so that you're not getting up every five minutes to go and get something to drink. Our brains, to function properly, they need three things. Well, they need four, but they need three things. They need oxygen, they need water, and uh, they need protein. So you need to be eating properly. You need to be getting plenty of water. Uh, again, at work, you know, a lot of people have got these water bottles in the corridors uh, that they just go and fill up their cups with. They don't even think about it. That water is absolutely critical. But oxygen as well, taking some deep breaths to get some oxygen back into your brain. When people get stressed, when they get pressured or when they start talking too fast, like I do, there's a tendency to start 
taking your air in like this. Now that's a bit exaggerated, but the point is that when we start um, getting stressed and pressured, we don't we don't let the air out. And when you don't let the air out and there's just this buildup in your brain and, you know, there's no oxygen flowing properly, it can make you feel giddy, dizzy, unhappy, all sorts of things. So oxygen, water and protein for your brain. Your brain also needs you to sleep properly so that it can sort out everything you've been thinking out about during the day. So those are the four things actually your brain needs. If possible, go outside during your breaks, your coffee breaks and your lunch breaks. Now, I appreciate that isolation means isolation. However, if you've got a balcony, go out on the balcony. You don't have to take deep breaths if you fear if you're fearful for pollution. Although, as we're hearing, the levels of pollution throughout the world are decreasing significantly because there are no planes, very few cars and all the rest of it. So go outside if you're living in an apartment block and, you know, with flats in a building just go downstairs, just spend a couple of minutes in front of the door. And, um, you know, do, opening a window, of course, you can open a window if you can open a window. But actually walking down some stairs or walking outside the door, just, you know, stretches your body a little bit, gets the muscles um, a little bit looser, so that you feel um, a little bit better than when you go back to your desk or you go on to your next activity that you've got planned on your timetable. And I'm going to reiterate again, before you stop your work day, review what you've done and then plan your next working day. Give yourself that clear cut between your work day and then your your family time or your downtime or your television time or your dinner time or whatever. As I said right at the beginning, one of the biggest problems with all of this, apart from the fact that we don't know how long it's going to last, is that emotionally your home is somewhere where you relax. And all of a sudden you are being asked to use your home, your relaxation, your your haven of peace as your workplace. And it can be uh, very stressful for a lot of people. So. I said at the beginning I was going to share with you um, the uh, what I offer through through Feel Good, the Feel Good online um, community working from home, because some people just don't feel comfortable uh, checking in with their colleagues. Sometimes, um, and this has also become very clear on the webinars, people they just want to actually uh, get together with people of. Um, Maybe it's international or maybe they just don't want to know them because after this is all over, I'm going to leave and I never have to speak to you again. And it doesn't matter. And some people feel safer in that kind of environment, just expressing how they actually feel, which is one of the reasons I, I um, opened up the Feel Good Working From Home online community. So what exactly does all that involve? Well, first and foremost, is that we have a chat three times a day at the very minimum um, on Zoom. It's a virtual coffee. It's just 10 or 15 minutes in the morning. How's it going? I'm going to ask you, is there anything I can do to support you? Have you got any ideas that you can give to others? Um, because something else I'm doing um, is, is uh, creating a list of, of websites. People are sending me their ideas to uh, keep the children um busy also like I said that the tracking apps and these kind of things so it's a, just a check-in three times a day how's it going you on track you okay do you need anything um I've also got a tracker that you can download so that you can track your days because honestly I keep saying honestly this is a brilliant opportunity for you to set some new boundaries and become more disciplined about how you are spending your time so that you are not working late into the night by the time you go back to work. This time tracker system you can then take back to work when you when you go back to the office and see how easy it really is to, to organize and to plan your day. I'm also going to be giving uh, prizes, weekly prizes, for the best home office photographs. I'm going to be asking you to send in your photographs or or maybe not even home office. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll think of some other things for you to photograph or maybe a, a prize for, for the best idea about how to, you know, keep yourself motivi motivated or the best wellness app or whatever. There will be weekly prizes. I'm going to be giving um, prizes away for those things. 
every week too i am going to be giving an additional live 60 minute motivation training and coaching with a q a um, where more people can come online if they want to um, and i'm going to be giving you very very specific techniques about how to stay on track with things um, and of course, we've got the closed online forum. Now that is just written, but it's closed. Nobody can see what's going on inside. And again, because I know some people shy away from Facebook, they shy away from social media. All this is hosted on my website and the only people who have access to it are the people who sign up and me. So that is my offer um, to you. If you uh, feel that, you know, actually you just want to be a little bit detached from, what's, from what else is going on, but you still want to have that communication, you still want to have that um, checking in, you still want to have that sense of belonging somehow, I'd be very, very happy to welcome you in there. That link always goes blue for some reason on the webinar. So I'm going to be sending you an email where the, the link is in white as well. That is $10 a day or uh, a week, I beg your pardon, not $10 a day, or you can get that for $30 um, a month, which I calculated is, is kind of around, you're probably even spending more on coffee um, every month if you're at work. So I would love it if you came to join me. Uh, in between times, I wish you the very, very best. Stay healthy. Please look after yourself. Please don't worry too much about other people. If you spend all your time worrying about others and you don't look after yourself, you won't be able to support them anyway. So like I said, from the bottom of my heart, loads of love, stay healthy, and as ever, stay fabulous. And bye for now. <laughs>